when you find the clicker, give it to me. Anyways, while well, he's taking care of that, and he'll bring me the clicker so I can go through my presentation. I want to say thank you. I have to thank uh, my guitar teacher, Dave Brumble, and all the um, musicians who have uh, crossed my path to teach me, and my mentors and my students, because I've learned a lot from all of them. And uh, collectively, what I've learned and, and what they've taught me gives me the foundation to talk to you today. Being a musician is a unique experience. We, um, we, we get to experience things that very few other professions get to, to uh, enjoy and do. Us, uh, the, the elder musicians, we teach the younger generation that comes up. We sit down and teach them whatever style of music, whatever the instrument is, the mechanics, the music, math, the history, how to perform, how to make a memory, create the emotions, as well as a lot about life and how to conduct themselves, not only on stage, but off stage. And, and, and at the same time, we encourage what's new. We want to hear that new music. Not only do you stay true to the history and mimic it and keep that history alive, because you can make a great living doing that. There's quite a few artists who, who do that. But they're also bringing something new to the table. We want to hear that new music. Uh, and we want to encourage it as an elder. So we, and, and that's our responsibility. We want to lead the community a little bit better than we found it also whenever we come in. Now, when I talk to um, the different musicians, you know, I used to play professionally in the previous century and teach guitar. And now, you know, I, I retired from the road, became studied to become a recording engineer and a producer, and relocated to Hampstead. Now I'm playing again and teaching in this century. And there's some things that didn't change. You know, the kids still want to learn whatever the hot band's licks are, and they want to play that and mimic it. But the one thing that did change, there was two things that actually changed, and I'm going to try to talk about those two things and how I've been proactive in trying to uh, make my own small contributions about those two things is, a lot of today's players just want to mimic. They don't really want to uh, create their own music or create their own arrangements. So when I ask them, have you written a tune or have you done anything, they say, no, I don't know how to. Where back when I was learning, it was all about that. You wanted to learn the hot tunes, but then all of a sudden you wanted to create your own sound. And that was the real motive. Uh, and from most of the people that I hung out with when I was uh, a younger musician. And our teachers were teaching us that way. And so we had that, and there's a other thing about performing, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So when I sit down and talk to some of these um, players, you know, they, they're just saying I can't create music. So I developed a technique, make sure, hello. Anyways, I developed a technique to start promoting creativity. It's called the one plus one can be. And what it basically does is this, this entry level to start thinking, making people start thinking out of the box. And yes, they can do something that is uh, creative. Uh, and so we, so we, we start out with that. And I'll sit down and talk with them. And they'll tell me that they can't do this and they can't do that. And I'll say, well, listen, this, if, you know, I have to imagine I'm sitting down with a guitar in my lap and I have a piece of paper and a pencil. And I sit down and I go, you know, you and I, us creative types. We see the world different. We do things, we help other people see things differently. We you know, uh, just can't help ourselves. And so this is something that, this is a good way to get started on one plus one can be. And we're gonna look at that and then we get you started. Because you know, you, in your front yard you have a tree. You go by that tree every day. You see the tree, I see the tree. We all see that tree. But you may write a song or create something, a poem or a movie or some sculpture, who knows what. And, and you reference the tree as your inspiration, or, or you're actually talking about the tree, and everybody now sees the tree in a new and different way. And that's really cool. Because now when they go by, they go, wow, I never thought of that tree that way before. And then they maybe come up with their own way of looking at the tree, and it's unique as well. So that's even cooler when that happens. So I say, we well, just look at this. And I'll say, one plus one can be greater than or less than one. Or I'll say one plus one can be less than or greater than one. Or I'll say one plus one can be four lines, or I'll say one plus one can be a rectangle or a box. And I, and I look at that and they look at me, and they, some of them go screaming for mom, others are looking in the directory for the local nervous hospital to figure out what's going on with me. But what most of them do is say, Mr. David, that's not right. That, it can't be that. And I go, 
what do you mean? They go, well, yeah, one plus one is equal to two. And I go, well, yeah, you're right. One plus one is equal to two because uh, that's a mathematical equation. That's been proven, it's right. We're going to uh, not talk about math. We're talking about one plus one and what it can be. Can you see up here the answer to why one plus one can be all those things and a lot more? Because all our can be answers, we always write the word or after our answer, so we're ready for the next can be answer. And they look at me, some of them get it, but most of them don't. And I say, well look, what us creative people do is we take something that we do see, like the tree, and we break it down to its elements. And we, and we take those individual elements and then we create something new that doesn't look like what it was originally. So in this case, one plus one is four straight lines. So we got one, two, three, four straight lines. I said, now, you can do lots of stuff with four straight lines, can't you? And I'll give them the paper and the pencil and they'll start drawing out different things. And I'll let them go for a while and then I say, you know, this is kind of cool what you've drawn. I, 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 I can do that. But no, you can do more. You know, you can do letters. There's a lot of letters you can do with four straight lines. And I then I, look, you can do numbers. Now, what's really cool about this and words, and uh, what's cool is I can get the whole family involved now to where creatively mom and dad and their, their brothers and sisters and friends, wherever they may be, can start putting their ideas together, work as a team. It's amazing to see a young person starting to think and putting all these different ideas together. So I'm you know, looking at them and getting them to start thinking this way and they're moving forward in the creative process. So that, that's, and then with the way we apply this to music is we take a song they already know, the chords and melody, and we take it apart and make things longer and shorter or omit them and then they create their own music that they, that they can call their own, knowing that it was inspired by whatever composition it was that they already knew how to play, uh, that they had learned. So, the next thing I did was, here I am, I'm a teacher. There's lots of teachers out here who have these very talented students. And when I was growing up, there was tons of places for us to play. And family-friendly places. And with sock hops, the schools, church, the corner, uh, parties, everything. Well today, as we well know, there's very few places for these young artists to get out there and exercise what they've learned from us, from us guys. So I decided that I'm with, in my own small way, to do something about that. I went to a local deli in Hampstead and asked them, um, can I bring in some students and have them play? Because performing is a lesson in and of itself. You learn a lot every time you get out there. You make mistakes or you do it right, whatever. You learn from it. And hearing strangers applaud is, carries a lot of benefit versus mom and dad just saying, yeah, you're doing good, okay? So the deli owner says, oh, it's a recital. And I said, no, 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 no recitals. This is a performance. And I think we can all agree, recitals can politely, if we put it in a polite way, are tedious sometimes. Yeah, you want a Motrin or an Advil concession stand to back. Because it's, it's painful sometimes. I didn't want that. So what I did with the Taste of Guitar event is this. Everybody had to audition and earn a performance slot. That's the first thing. Next thing is, the um, musician uh, preferred them to play a solo piece, but they could bring in a friend, a family member, or their teacher to, uh, to accompany them. I wanted them to play more than one tune, so I would introduce them, and all the compositions that they would play afterwards, the student had to introduce it. You had to say the title, and the composer, or the band, and they would do, do their set. So everybody had to do that. I wanted it to be free to the public. So we have other elder musicians come in and contribute with equipment or other services. We have sponsors who would pay for advertising and other things like that. So we can keep it free to the community. And on top of that, I wanted to keep it to be an educational situation where I bring in a guest artist, someone who specializes in an instrument or a style of music so they can hear someone else talk to them about the very same thing I'm already teaching them or their current teacher is teaching them. And um, so that way they can see these guys warm up, they can see them perform, and they and the audience can ask the guest artists questions about whatever it is they're talking about that night. 
So here's a poster from when we were in the deli. And what we do with the student performers is we do a photo shoot. We treat them just as if they're a recording uh, artist. And we do a photo shoot so they can experience that. We create a poster and uh, so they can have that for their archives. And as you can see, UNCW's own uh, Bob Russell came up to support them in uh, the event. And, and it was a, that was just a great night. And, it's, and what was happening, the community started the, to really support this and we had to uh, move out of the deli. And this is a, we moved to an, to an art gallery. You can see it's physically much bigger, brought in more teachers. So now we have more student performers. And so from Nashville, we had the National Finger Pick Check and Richard Smith come in. He used to play with Chet Atkins and people like that to come in and talk and perform. And the audience got to hear them. And mind you, this is all free. And it's free because the elder musicians came in and the community came in to embrace it. And what's really nice also about this for the students is when they fill out their, their college apps, they can say, I auditioned and had to earn a performance slot. I uh, gave back to the community because that's what this is doing. And they uh, do public speaking. So there's a lot of things on that college app they get to tick off just by participating in this. And the, the smile on their faces, when they hear the applause, of strangers, and we're talking about now upwards to 150 people saying, hey, thank you for your hard work, your attention to, pay, uh, your attention to detail to perform. And the performers are from entry level, they're just good enough to be getting out for the first time to advance is uh, the skill level that you'll come in here, and it's a wide variety of styles of music. It's not one style of music from uh, head to toe, it, you, it's a lot of flavors. It's like going through all the channels on the regular or on your iPod. Now here's a pitch, of, okay. So now I'm gonna take time to talk about some former students. This is Mike Brown from the previous century. He, um, you can go out on Reverb Nation, hear his body of work. He used to be in the Ravelers and uh, he's now currently doing the band from Rapcon, which is surf guitar. Uh, music and spaghetti uh, western th the theme music and uh, Mike's just a great guy and this next one is uh, some former students are now on the Pacific Coast and uh, Cameron and Kelly uh, are doing some great film work out there and they're winning awards for their work and as you can see uh, it's hard to see this picture but uh, Cameron is wearing a Taste the Guitar alumni t-shirt um, Something that we do is the, the people who perform and the guest artists get what's called a Taste of Guitar alum shirt, alumni shirt. So they made the short list. So that only those people have this. And uh, the current student that I'm teaching is a very fine guitarist is Kaylee Holt, but you can see she's also very talented in drawing and doing different things like that. And then also Skylar Smith, I'm currently teaching him that he has his first CD out. You can go to Reverb Nation and listen to that as well if you want to hear um, um, his work. But anyways, I want to say thank you for uh, giving me the, the opportunity to talk to you about the starting process of being creative and actually being able to go out and exercise your, your, your trade that, that, uh, that they've learned in playing music. Thank you very much.